That's all you. So we should be set. Right. So guys, uh, I have some spare alpha cards. If somebody wants to follow up or wants to work along, you can take. I mean, if you guys want to follow me, I have like two, three alpha cards. You can try to work with me if you want oh to. Yeah. yeah. Anyone who has Kali Linux virtual machine, they can take this. There's only three of them. Okay guys, shall we start? Can you hear me there on the Twitch? Okay. All right guys, so uh, today um, our uh, demonstration is about wireless hacking. So I'll just start with the basics. Uh, those who already know the basics, that's good. Um, I'll just take you through only I'll be m mostly discussing the practical part um, a little bit of theory about the protocols that that are there and how they work is also necessary to understand um, so that you know how the attack actually works right so the first thing you need if you are working uh, in the virtual machine uh, of you know Kali Linux, then you need an external wireless card to to launch all these attacks. And the reason is because uh, the virtual machine, it doesn't uh, support the drivers for these wireless cards. Um, however, if you are running Kali Linux as an operating system, uh, you know, uh, booted from the hard disk, then you don't need an external card because it will... Um, it will actually pick up your internal wireless card of your uh, laptop as well, right? So, so like I said, I mean, if you need to work with the virtual machine, you need an external adapter. Um, so, also not every adapter, external adapter, will be compatible. But the most common one or popular one is Alpha, which is compatible normally with the Kali Linux. So, you won't face any problems if you are having an external Alpha card, like I have some of these on my desk. Now the next thing is that once you plug in the alpha card, you just need to make sure you go to the removable devices here option and then you just need to make sure that it is connected to the virtual machine and not to the host operating system. So here you can see it says disconnect connect to the host. It actually means that it is connected to Kali Linux, right? The next thing is that you want to check if basically your external adapter is there and uh, Kali Linux has picked it up. You can simply write the command iwconfig and with iwconfig it actually displays all the wireless interfaces that you have. So you can see here that I have a wireless interface uh, WLAN 0. And another thing that you need to look out, uh, I mean to, to notice is that uh, right now it's uh, in the managed mode. So if you're launching the uh, you know these attacks your card should be in the monitor mode and not in the manage mode so I'll, I'll take you through those steps that how you can actually um, uh, you know take it to the monitor mode now another important thing is that sometimes it picks up the wireless card but it's actually not enabled so uh, sometimes when you run for example if config now right now you can see that it's there but sometimes it's it's actually connected Kali Linux, Linux picks it up, but you actually cannot see it here. So 
Sometimes, you know, I have seen this, that the students, they start thinking that, you know, maybe there's a problem with the wireless card. So you just need to make sure, in order to see all the interfaces, just write fconfig hyphen A, it will actually show you whether the interface is enabled or not enabled, all of them will be displayed. And then if one of the interfaces is disabled, you can simply just write if config, let's say this was disabled, you can write it if config WLAN 0 up, and then this um, interface will basically come up, okay? So this is another thing that, you know, I've seen over a period of time that the students, they, they face this issue. All right, so now we know that the wireless card is there and it's working. Uh, so let's uh, get started. The first thing you need to check is that uh, IW list, uh, the interface name that you have, so WLAN 0, and then okay. The next thing is that you need to know that your alpha card, uh, what kind of uh, frequency channels does it support? Uh, because nowadays we have uh, 5 gigahertz and 2.4 gigahertz and within 2.4 gigahertz frequency we have like, uh, normally we have like 14 frequency channels within this 2.4 ISM frequency band. So it basically you can see it starts with 2.412 and it goes to 2.484, right? So you need to understand whether your card actually supports uh, uh, 2.4, whether it supports 5G or whether it supports uh, both. Now my alpha cards, they are quite old, so uh, maybe the new alpha cards probably they will be supporting the 5 gigahertz frequency uh, band as well. But currently my uh, alpha card, it only supports 2.4 uh, gigahertz, right? Uh, another thing that you can check is that whether your card is working fine by using IW Sorry. IW dev WLAN zero scan grep SSID. So I just want to check, like, uh, I'm just scanning and capturing only the SSIDs which are basically within the range of my wireless adapter. Uh, so you can see here that it's it's actually working fine. I'm just dumping the SSIDs only, uh, the service set identifier, or you can also call it the name of the network. You can see here it has picked up NJIOT and then Cybersecurity Ranger 2. And so this is basically my own wireless router that I have that we are going to work on, right? So, so far everything looks good and everything is working fine. Now I'll take you step by step. First we will do the um, WEP cracking, then I will show you WPA2 cracking. Then I will show you how to set up a rogue access point and then how people can get connected to that free Wi-Fi or rogue access point and so on, right? So let's get started. Now the tool that we are going to use is, uh, first of all, Airmon NG. Uh, now Airmon NG is basically to start your WLAN card into uh, monitor mode. Like I said, it was in the managed mode initially. So I'm going to change this managed mode to monitor mode. Uh, sometimes you might see that there are some processes that are conflicting. Basically, uh, you can actually kill them by running this command ng. check kill. I didn't kill it before, so if I kill it now, it will actually shut down my wireless card also. I'm not going to run it. If you face problem with your wireless card that these processes, the, the one that you see with process ID 682 and 2110, if they are conflicting with your wireless card and it's not working, then it's better to run this command first, Airmon ng check kill. It will actually kill these conflicting processes and then you can run Airmon NG start WLAN 0 to start the monitor mode. Now you can see here that it says that the monitor mode is enabled on my WLAN 0. Now it varies from one laptop to another, one wireless card to another. 
sometimes this monitor mode when you enable it creates a new interface a new wireless interface it creates which is in the monitor mode so you will have WLAN 0 and then you will have an additional interface maybe with MON 0 with WLAN 0 MON depends so you just need to check before you move on that which of your wireless interface actually is in the monitor mode so if I run it IW config again you can see that it did not create a new wireless interface for me it actually the WLAN 0 itself is in the monitor mode so I'm going to use always WLAN 0 but in your case if a new interface gets created then you basically use that particular interface uh, for all the rest of the commands right okay the next thing is once your card is in the monitor mode then you need to run the command aero dump ng wlan 0 or in other words whatever interface is in the monitor mode and then you can start dumping basically all the wireless cards uh, sorry all the wireless networks that are there right so now what you see is that it's basically scanning and monitoring all the networks which are in this range now what you see here from the left side is you have the BSSID BSSID means basic service set identifier it's basically the MAC address of the wireless router um, the power is basically the strength of the signals uh, that are you know picked up by, by the wireless card and then you can see here the beacons now what are beacons? A beacons basically means the packets which contain the name of the network, the SSID of the network. Those are basically the beacon packets. Now different wireless routers they are configured uh, differently. Some of the routers they send these beacons more frequently. Some of the wireless routers they probably you know takes a little bit more time to broadcast these beacons. The idea of the beacon is that it basically carries the name of the network. So when you come in with your wireless device and your wireless device, whether it's a mobile or a laptop, whatever, it is going to receive these beacons, the beacons and then you can actually see what are the networks which are available, right? So that's why you can see here these are different routers which are sending different number of beacons. So you can see here 19 received from this router 14 so these are the routers which are sending these beacons more frequently right now sometimes the network administrators they hide these beacons so they disable it uh, and the reason is that they want to make the network hidden right so you might have seen some networks that are hidden for example you have this network which is length 0 this network which is length 0 it means that they are basically the um, routers and you can see zero in front of them that they are not broadcasting the beacons um, so finding a hidden network the SSID or the name of the network is easy uh, it can be done uh, very easily I will I will tell you how the next is the number of packets per second um, it depends how frequently these and since I'm not connected to these routers so I don't know how many data packets are basically there but if I'm connected I can pick up and most of these packets they are obviously encrypted packets right now another important thing is the channel so the channel basically like I said there are 14 frequency channels that you see um, in um, in 2.4 gigahertz frequency band so you can see here channel 1 channel 6 channel 11 now in the networks normally when you have multiple wireless routers within the building the network administrators they usually try to configure them on the different frequency channels within those 14 channels and the reason is so that they want to avoid interference with each other even if they are on the same frequency channel different wireless router it's fine they will work but they might have more collision of packets and here you can see basically what kind of uh, security protocol is is being used right so you have WPA2 CCMP WPA2 open WPA2 so open basically means open authentication so maybe when you get connected you get a web authentication I don't know 
uh, maybe there's no authentication at all you just get connected and start using um, so that you might find it in the you know public places sometimes you get the free Wi-Fi right okay so now I'm going to stop this scan and I'm going to again run it because I want to pick up my so I will start with the WEP so you can see here for example the target router is cybersecurity ranger 2 and this is the MAC address So I'm going to copy this and it's using WEP right now it's no surprise that WEP is not being used anymore uh, and the reason is because it can be brute forced so any protocol uh, or any algorithm that can be brute force is basically you can say is the weakest protocol so I mean if you look at brute force attack it is actually it can be launched on any system in the world and it will work a uh, hundred percent but it depends on how much time it will take so if you have a brute force attack which can be done within a you know workable time period then you know that protocol is considered as the weak but if it takes long time I mean WPA2 can also be brute forced. The difference is that you know the key size is big, it's it's a better encryption algorithm, so it may take maybe a year or two to for you to brute force WPA2. So when you look at the time uh, complexity, it increases in WPA2, you know, so that's why um, it's not a bad protocol, it's a good protocol. But however, there are other vulnerabilities in them. Okay, so now next thing is dump ng hyphen c so i need to know the channel on which this uh, wireless router is working so hyphen c6 is the channel hyphen hyphen bssid is the mac address and then hyphen w i'm going to write these packets uh, i'm going to write it in the root folder so just i will give it a name wep Crack. So the file name is crack. So what this command will do is that before I was scanning the whole networks and it was showing me all the network. But now I want to isolate it. I only want to capture the traffic which is coming on channel 6 and coming from this wireless router. And then I'm going to write these packets um, into a file called WEP crack, right? So let's start now. So now you can see that it's actually dumping and uh, capturing uh, these packets. Now, in the real life scenario, obviously somebody will be connected to a wireless router, right? And in order to crack WEP, you need at least 20,000 packets to crack it. And the reason why you need minimum 20,000 packets is maybe you can crack it before that is because the way WEP protocol works is that it uses initialization vectors, which means every packet that is being sent it, ha it is actually encrypted with a key plus the IV, the initialization vector. Now the initialization vector is 24 bits, which means the maximum number of initialization vectors that can go is 2 raised to the power 24, right? So after 2 raised to the power 24 packets, basically IV repeats itself and the key is static. So it means the key stream will repeat itself after 2 raised to the power 24 packets, right? If you start from zero, then you need 2 raised to the power 24 packets. To get the reputation but since the implementation of WEP is such that IV is selected randomly so this basically repetition it sometimes come quicker than to rest per 24 packets right so now what you see here is that I have zero data packets right um, uh, what you need to do in order to capture these data packets is that you need to open a new terminal and what I'm going to do is that here replay hyphen one hyphen one is for fake authentication which means that I want to get fakely authenticated to the um, to the wireless router zero hyphen a and then the MAC address and then WLAN zero just a minute I think my card went down Okay, so it's trying to get a fake authentication. Yeah, you can see here that I've, I was successful in getting authenticated, right? You can see here it says sending authentication request. And this is basically a vulnerability within the uh, 
within the WEP that I was able to fakely authenticate myself. And when I authenticate myself, you can see here that my station, I mean the Kali Linux or the wireless adapter, uh, in other words, is basically now connected to the, and now you can see here still the data packets are zero. Now in the real life scenario, somebody is connected already and he might be browsing through the website, downloading something. So you will see that the data packets will be coming at a very high rate, but right now I don't have anything. So what I need to do here is, and even if somebody is connected and you still are not getting any packets, you can launch a replay attack to increase the number of packets that you are getting, right? So for example, right now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to uh, connect my cell phone uh, with the wireless router and before I, I do that, let me run another command. Actually, somebody else also got fakely authenticated, okay. So it's good. Now you will also receive the data packets, right? So whatever I'm getting, you will also be getting. So air replay ng-3 is basically for the replay attack, which means I will be sending a lot of packets replaying them to the wireless router in order to reach the IV limit more quicker, right? So minus three, minus B, and the MAC address and WLAN zero, right? Okay. Okay. Now what's uh, happening here is that I have launched a replay attack but the data packets are still not increasing and the reason is because there is no actual station connected to it, right? So what I'm going to do now is I will just connect my mobile phone with this as an authenticated user and what the air replay is going to do is it is going to pick up the ARP packets and then it will actually start replaying those packets. If you see now on the other screen that it has started actually capturing the data packets, right? Uh, still, it's a little bit slower than what I expected. Like I said, I mean, if it was a real uh, scenario, somebody might be connected to the internet, downloading something. These packets will shoot actually very fast. Let me try to do it again. is some problem because the number of packets are still not really increasing at a high rate. Can anyone connect his laptop with this uh, wireless? So I will give you the key, you just get connected. Can anyone else also launch the replay attack? You are already fakely authenticated, right? Can you launch a replay? Uh, the key? Yeah, it's uh, three, three, six, capital B, nine, A, capital A, three, nine, 
capital C, capital A. Okay, now you can see, I think you started the replay. You can see the number of packets per second has jumped to 337, right? And the data packets are increasing at a much higher rate, right? So let's just wait for it to reach 20,000. And then, and it's not uh, like a rule of thumb that it is, you, you will be able to crack it on 20,000. If you are not able to crack, let it capture more packets. Maybe at 30, 35,000, you will be able to crack. So you just don't stop it. When it reaches 20,000, you can try to crack it. If it cracks, then it's fine. Now the reason why you got, uh, you're getting these data packets very high because he connected his laptop. And when he connected, there was an ARP request that was between this, his laptop and the wireless router. And then the Kali, it basically, or the replay tag that you launched, it basically is replaying the same ARP packet that was captured, right? So now you can see we have reached 23,000 now. Okay, so most probably it is going to work now. So what you need to do next is, I will just clear the screen. So I didn't stop the capture. Now I'm going to use another tool called aircrack ng and the file in which I was actually saving these. So if I show you the files, first I started with WEP crack and it actually creates with dash zero one automatically. So whenever you give a file name, it will start with dash zero one. But then I started it again because my, I think card went down, wireless card. Now the file that contains all these data packets is dot capture file, dot cap, right? So I'm going to use the tool called air crack hyphen ng wep crack 02 because that is the latest file that I have dot cat right so when I press enter it was very fast and it was able to find the key by using brute force method and you can see here sorry I, I didn't get you. For cracking and for brute force, you didn't use the wireless. That's wrong. No, no, for the WEP, th that's why I said that this is the worst wireless protocol because you don't need a wordless. You just crack it by using brute force. And I I think I told you maybe last time the funny story about me and my head of department. When I joined Oman, I think it was 2012. And uh, my head of department there in, in, in the university was a Turkish guy. So I was living in his building and I didn't have the internet connection. And I was surprised that there was a wireless router that was still configured with the WEP. So I actually brute forced it and then I got connected. So in the evening when he came and visited me because he wanted to check on me how I'm doing, uh, you know, I was new in his building. I told him that I'm, you know, just browsing some videos and going. And he was surprised, like, how do you have the internet access? I told him there was someone's wireless and I brute force, I mean, I cracked it. It was configured with a weak security. And, I, you know, I'm using internet. And he, he didn't believe me, like, you know, he said, okay, show me. Because he thought I'm a teacher, so teachers, you normally, they don't have these, you know, they're they, they, they are not much into the practical aspects. They're usually teaching theoretical stuff and all but anyways, when he saw it was actually his wireless that I was connected to. <laughs> and after that, he never trusted me. <laughs> Whenever there was anything wrong with his internet, he will come running down. What are you doing with my wireless router? <laughs> okay, so now you have seen uh, how we can crack the WEP by using the brute force attack. Now I'm going to, um, because I didn't want to configure another router again, I'm going to connect to my second router, which is configured with the WPA2. Now remember WPA2 and w, WPA and WPA2, the method of cracking, both of them is same. Okay, so I will just demonstrate WPA2. It automatically means that you also know how to crack the WPA protocol, okay? So let's just stop that, it's already done.
Okay, no other terminal is running. All right. So we're going to use mostly the same commands, but the first thing we need to find out is that the target wireless router that we want to attack. So I'm going to stop the scan now. You can see here, uh, this is my wireless router, Cybersecurity Ranger. And this is configured with WPA2 CCMP. Uh, and it's running on channel 11, right? So I will just copy the MAC address of this. And let me just do one more thing. Okay, so the next step is same like we did in the previous one, error dump hyphen ng hyphen c, this time it's channel 11 hyphen hyphen bssid uh, the mac address hyphen w, we want to save these packets that we are capturing into file called, let's call it WPA crack WLAN 0. Okay? It's the exactly some, same command, just I change the file name and the MAC address and the of course. Now you can see here that uh, I'm basically capturing now again the packets which are um, between these, this cybersecurity ranger and any other station that might be connected to it, right? Um, there's a channel, uh, there's a station already connected and that is actually my mobile phone which is already connected to it, okay? Now remember, there's a difference the way WEP works and the way WPA and WPA2 works. WPA and WPA2, they basically exchange a four-way handshake which means when you are authenticating, when you enter your password and you get connected to the Wi-Fi router, there are four messages that are exchanged between your device and the wireless router. Now, in order to crack the WPA, you need to capture those four packets, okay? I'm also going to run Wireshark here just to show you those four packets. Okay, and I'm going to capture it on WLAN 0. Okay, so my Wireshark is capturing the packets and I'm also capturing the packets by using Aerodown. Okay, now there are two situations in which you can actually get the uh, four-way handshake. One situation is that you are scanning like I'm scanning, I'm capturing, and somebody gets connected during that time. You will get the four-way handshake. Another way is that you don't want to wait for somebody to get connected. You can actually de-authenticate the person who is connected and then get the four-way handshake because he will re-authenticate himself. Now it's normal, you might have seen on your cell phones, when you get disconnected, you get automatically reconnected, right? If you have, uh, you know, your wireless card is configured as auto-join. So what I'm going to do now is that I'm going to try to de-authenticate this station and then it will automatically re-authenticate itself and then we will see if we can get the, the handshake. There's some problem with my wireless card, it goes down. Okay. Now what I can try to do is a replay ng hyphen zero three hyphen A, the MAC address of the router, hyphen C, and then the MAC address of the client, C6, colon 5366-7B, A5, B7, WLAN 0. Okay? Now what this command does, 
to zoom in. Now what this command does, a replay ng-0 basically means uh, deauthenticate. 3 means send 3 d three deauthentication packets. It's up to you. You can send 1 deauthentication packet. If it works for you, you can send 2, you can send 10, 20, whatever you like. Then it says that send 3 deauthentication packets to this uh, wireless router. Now the way these, uh, according to the IEEE standard, the way 802.11 works, it has both authentication and deauthentication packets in its standard, which means that when you send a deauthentication packet, it is not a fake packet. It's a normal IEEE 802.11 standard management frame. And what it means is that the wireless router is going to accept it. Why? Because it's a genuine packet. You are, it's just like an administrator is telling the uh, wireless router to please deauthenticate this particular client. And that is the reason why it's, it works, right? So what, when I do this, you will see that um, it will send three deauthentication packets. My station, my mobile will get disconnected. It will try to connect again. And that is the point where I will be able to capture the four-way handshake, right? So press enter. It sends three deauthentication packets. And if I go back, just wait for some time. Something should appear on the top of this screen. If it appears, it means that I was able to capture the four-way handshake. Oh, my mobile got connected to NGIT, sorry, <laughs> because I have, uh, it is connected to NGIT as well as, so when it gets disconnected from one, it gets connected to the other one, right? So, sorry about that. Okay, now you can see here, I just disabled the NGIT network. So now you can see here on the top, you have the WPA handshake, right? It basically means that it was able to capture those four messages that we want or the four packets. So if I want, if I show you in the Wireshark, I will just stop the capture. Too many packets there. I hope I can find them. EA, POL. So basically EA, POL is extensible authentication protocol. It's, um, so now you can see here uh, message one of four, three of four, four of four, and somewhere here you can see also 204, right? Uh, it has uh, duplicate packets because probably it connected twice, so I got the handshake twice. These are the four packets that actually are exchanged when a station is getting authenticated from the, uh, from the wireless router. What is inside these messages? Well, it's a, bit, a little bit complicated, but I will just show you one of these messages. For example, message number one, if you see here, it is an 802.1x authentication packet. And what you see here inside is the version, uh, the key, the length, and this is message number one. It actually contains random numbers. So what you see here is that WPA key nonce. Nonce basically means a random number. So the first message contains a random number from the, the client. The second one contains the stage, um, a random number from the um, from the uh, the wireless router and then they basically use these random numbers to generate a session key okay so now by capturing these four packets the next step is that we want to basically now crack the uh, this uh, WPA2 key right so we can stop it here now because since we have the handshake now we will use aircrack ng and let me just check the file that I have. So you can see here WPA crack one. This was when my card got disabled. So I'm going to use the WPA crack dash two dot cap. So if you were capturing, you should also get the handshake and you can try to, but you don't have the dictionary, I guess. So air crack ng um, hyphen w. Now here hyphen w basically means the word list. 
or in other words, the dictionary file, right? <coughs> Root desktop, I'm going to use this dictionary. Uh, root underscore password dot txt and the file that I have WPA okay so that should do minus W is the is the path to the dictionary file and this is the file that contains the four-way handshake and let's press enter so now what is it is trying to do is that it is trying to use the dictionary attack to get the key from the four messages that that were captured so what you see here is the key which is capital P at double SW zero RD now remember that WPA2 is not brute forcible and which is a good thing from the security perspective because if it was again brute forcible then it can be brute force if you have really high performance systems or you are using distributed computing or you're using cloud computing where you have multiple machines and you can distribute the job of this cracking these keys uh, nowadays you have services actually available on the cloud as well that you give them the four-way handshake they can crack it for you because they have more resources than than I have for example on my laptop and especially for brute forcing you need the graphics cards uh, you know they, they, that will be much much more faster than that so yeah I mean WPA2 can be brute forced again like I said if you are having enough resources now recently I think not actually very recently but there were two Belgian researchers uh, who were able to crack the WPA without the dictionary and if you go online I'll just show you quickly So WPA is actually no longer secure. I mean, before there was a dictionary attack only possible. So we, you know, we were still safe. But since they launched, uh, they, they, they found another vulnerability. Now basically it's no longer secure. So if you Google crack attack, basically here you can see it's called key reinstallation attack, breaking WPA2 by forcing nonce reuse. It's actually without the dictionary attack. And they have released the script for um, testing for now that you can test your wireless router, whether it's vulnerable to key reinstallation attack or not. So most of the wireless routers, they are still vulnerable unless you go and upgrade the firmware of your wireless router. So and I don't think uh, people, they actually go and upgrade their firmware. Yeah. So the, maybe the, 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 the latest routers that you buy now are not vulnerable to this attack. So the, the point here is that it is no longer secure, WPA2. And that's why they are actually moving to WPA3 now. But WPA3, already people have actually researched and found vulnerabilities on WPA3 as well. So the w wireless security is still you know it's it's not that good i would say but obviously if you use a complex password for example for wpa2 you are still safe to some extent but if somebody knows how to use and they i don't think they have still released the actual script to launch key reinstallation tag they have only released the script that can actually detect whether your router is vulnerable or not but they are going to i think they mention it here somewhere um, sooner or later obviously they are going to release the script um, anyways you, you can read it out I, I read it a time ago they, they are basically trying to give time for these uh, vendors that they can actually patch their devices with this and once they have given enough time, they will release the script as well. Okay. All right. So the next thing now that we want to do is okay. The next thing is uh, the rogue access point that how you can actually set up a rogue access point um,
let me try to first a config wlan0 no sorry so if you want to stop the monitor mode you can use the command airmon ng stop wlan0 so um, I, I just want to check that it's still in the monitor mode um, it says it's disabled but it's not disabled these kind of problems they will happen okay so no surprise going to disconnect it and then connect it again for creating the um, a rogue access point you actually need uh, bridge utils I think bridge dash utils so it's not available in Kali you need to install it okay so let me just first fix my card Okay, so I think it's apt dash get install <coughs> Yeah, so this is basically the tool that you need. Bridge dash utils. So my battery is Just give me one minute, please. So if you don't have it, you can install it now. That orange cable works. Oh no, I can connect it to you, right? All right, uh, if you have installed this one, the next thing is to to add the bridge, so brctl, add bridge, and then you can basically give it a name. Um, I'm going to call it, let's just say, ngit, okay? Now I have created a bridge. The next thing is mm, brctl add if I'm going to add the interface ngit eta0. So I'm going to add the ethernet interface to this particular bridge. Okay, let me just check something.
Yeah, so the bridge is created now, the NGIT, okay? So, so it's just like this, that I'm creating a bridge and then I will add two interfaces to this bridge. And what I'm trying to do is that I'm trying to uh, create an interface on which the people will get connected and that their traffic will go through this bridge to my Ethernet interface so that they are able to get the Internet access, okay? ATV. Okay. I think I missed something. Airbase NG hyphen hyphen ESSID. <coughs> I'm again changing it to the monitor mode. So, air base. Hyphen, hyphen, ESSID. Fake, no. Let's call it Starbucks. Hyphen C11, WLAN 0. Okay, yeah, so this was actually the first command that I should have run before creating the bridge, but it's okay. What I'm doing now is that I'm using a tool called Airbase NG, hyphen hyphen ESSID is the name of the network. Uh, and I have tested it on various public places like airport terminals and I saw how people, they get, you know, lucrated and they, they are lured into connecting into the free Wi-Fi, right? So. I just gave it a name Starbucks and it will be running on channel 11 and uh, WLAN 0. Now if you open your cell phones, you will be able to see that there is a Wi-Fi called Starbucks. Right? You can see it, but still uh, it will not allow you to get connected. And the reason is because it is correct, it, it is there, but it's not able to get you an IP address through the DHCP. So what I need to do is I need to create a bridge. I need to bridge this AT0 tapping interface with the ETS0, which is my actual interface on Kali Linux. When they are bridged together, so whenever somebody is trying to get connected through that bridge, it will be able to give you uh, the IP address, right? So now I will go back here to adding the bridge. So I already added brctl and if I already added the Ethernet interface so now I'm going to add to NGIT AT0 her network is down can you still see it or no there's something wrong actually though with the card that I'm using but let's see it's not there right let me start it again should be there now okay all right so now I have added both of them to the bridge the next thing is if config at 0 0 dot 0 dot 0 dot 0 up Currently it's down once you do that. If config NGIT and 192.168. Now this is the IP address of my local Ethernet, okay? It's running on 36 dot something, uh, 36 dot zero network. So I have to give this bridge an IP from the same uh, network, okay? So 36 dot, let's just say I'm going to give it 100 okay 
and one more command is echo one and this is for forwarding the traffic uh, slash proc net ipv4 ip underscore forward i think I, I i did this before as well in one of my other demonstrations and now basically can anyone try uh, wait a minute i will start the wireshark just to see the charge complete now you can see here uh, on any of these interfaces you can actually capture whether it's at0 or ngit or so i'm going to start capturing on let's just say at0 interface can somebody get connected to this and is it connected now because you can see here the client associated with the ssid means that somebody got connected sorry maybe the card again went down I think there's some problem with my card, but you can see here that, you know, these uh, clients which are trying to get connected, uh, you can see their, their MAC addresses. So you can try it later on again. Um, maybe there's some problem with the, the DSCP that it's not giving it an IP address. None of you got connected, right? It's trying. it's trying, but it doesn't get connected, right? Yeah, there's something, because it's it shows that it is associated, but then it's not basically giving you an IP address. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Just give me one minute. If config NGIT, just give me one minute. I think I know the problem. NGIT 192.168.36.100.
Well, this is normally that happens in the live demonstrations. <laughs> sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Okay, there's something wrong with my card, guys. Um, it's getting down again and again. But you have got the idea, right? So you can try it once you go home. Okay. Now there is also another thing uh, that normally the administrators they do they uh, they use uh, access control in the wireless routers by by putting the MAC addresses into the whitelist of the wireless router, right? They filter by MAC addresses. So even if you have the password, you still cannot get connected. Uh, and the reason is because uh, you are not into the list of MAC addresses that are configured on the wireless router, right? So MAC filtering can also be bypassed very easily. You just need to find out the MAC address of the target router, okay? And then you just use a tool like this, for example, Mac changer so with the Mac changer you can actually set the Mac address of or change the Mac address of any of your interface means if your Mac address is not into the whitelist of the uh, of the wireless router you can find out the station by running error dump the MAC address of the station who is already connected there and then spoof or change your MAC address with that particular MAC address. So for example if I have the interface WLAN 0 right and I think this is the MAC address of my WLAN 0. So what I need to do is first of all error dump ng dump sorry in mon ng wlan0 wlan0 down Okay, so like I said, if MAC filtering is enabled on the wireless router and you're not able to get connected, you just need to dump the network and see what is the station which is already connected there. Note down its MAC address and then put your interface down first by using if config WLAN 0 down and then simply use MAC changer hyphen M and whatever that station has the MAC address, you just write that MAC address here to change the MAC address of your WLAN. And now you can see here that uh, the new MAC address of my wireless card is 00000221, right? And if I make it up, WLAN 0 up. So now you can see the MAC address is now changed. By using this, you can actually bypass the MAC filtering on the wireless routers. All right, guys. Okay, 
if you have any questions please let me know because I'm done for today
Yeah. Austin, OWSIM. The new name is Alien War, so you can find both of them. It's really good. Uh, I think QRIDAR also now, they have uh, the IBM, they have also an academic uh, license for QRIDAR. So the more popular, uh, obviously, in the, in the scene is QRIDAR. Um, you know, better ranked than the Alien War. But these are the things that if you have worked with one of the, them, uh, then you can actually, when you go for the interview or you go for the job, if you tell them that, okay, I know one of the CM, uh, you know, uh, SIEM solution that I have worked with, then for them it doesn't matter that if they have the QRIDAR in there. They know that you can work around with the QRIDAR, you can work around with art side. It doesn't matter because it's all about learning one and then you should know how you make the correlations uh, between the different security events to generate the alerts and stuff like that. So. Uh, yeah, I mean, SOC is one of the popular areas nowadays that's getting more and more popular. Another thing that I was interested in uh, was uh, the cybersecurity range. Uh, it's a new idea nowadays in the market. And there's one company that I know that, is, uh, that they have a good solution. It's called Cyberbit. Uh, it's an Israeli company, and I was almost, I was almost hired by them before coming here uh, while I was working in Dubai. So they are based in the United States, actually, this company, Cyberbit. And if you get a chance, you know, Cyber Range is really, really interesting idea. What they do is that they have a solution where they can actually simulate your whole infrastructure. If you, for example, you have uh, this critical infrastructure that you want to do the pen testing, so nobody would allow you to pen test the actual critical infrastructure. You know? no, nobody is that stupid. So. What they do in the cyber range is that they basically can simulate the whole infrastructure that you have. You can actually launch all the attacks within that cyber range, test, and then, you know, so you can create red teams, blue teams within that cyber range, launch attacks, defend against them. So it's, it's really, really something that I'm, I'm interested in. But, but the problem is that there's no open source platform that is available for, for the cyber range. They, they are all paid solutions. I even talked to the dean when I came here that, you know, he told me that actually CyberRain, they came here and they tried to pitch their product to them that, you know, you should buy it for the students. And I told him, I mean, it's a good idea. I mean, <laughs> uh, the students will learn more and, you know, for myself, I was so excited. If they, and he said, okay, we'll, we'll look into it. We will have some other meetings with them and then maybe we, we decide to get it. So if we can get it, uh, I think it will be best for the students work on the cyber range. And this is something you will see a lot of job opportunities in cyber range in the future as well. So cyber security, I mean, if you are in cyber security, you are in the right field at the right time. And it's not going anywhere just like other fields that they die out after a few years. AI and cyber security, they're not going to die out for a very long time. Right? I think I have given enough of the talk. <laughs> So I hope you enjoyed my lectures and the demos. Uh, you can always reach out to me, asad.raza at ngit.edu. If you have any questions, you need some help. And I'll see you in the next semester. Okay. Thank you, guys. Thank you.